Do you know what it feels like to live in a splendidly luxurious castle, wearing extravagant dresses, indulging in exquisite dishes, and always having servants take care of you? Well, actually, I don't really know either. I'm just a little maid who's fortunate enough to be friends with Princess Anne. <laughs> Oh, by the way, my name is Diana, and I was born in the palace of a small European kingdom. Sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Well, I don't exactly live a fairy tale life. I'm only here because of my mother, Stella. She had devoted her entire life to serve the queen. So in return, I was allowed to live in the castle. And when I grew up, I became a servant to Princess Anne, who was just a few ages older than me. So we immediately hit it off. Ironically, though, I'm not quite cut out to be a servant. I'm a bit... Okay, maybe very clumsy, and I tend to be less helpful than I actually should. When all is quiet, it's likely that I've just hidden myself away in the library, lost in its endless sea of books. It would be more fun if Anne was just as happy to spend time in the library as me, but she doesn't care much for reading or studying. She said it makes you age like crazy. But still, she must attend her mandatory classes, by the Queen's order, of course. Although, she'd much better enjoy cooking, cleaning, and decorating. So, whenever there weren't eyes on us, Anne and I would help each other out. I would sneak into her classes, listen to the tutor attentively so I could help her with assignments later. In return, she'd help me with the palace's errands. Anne was how I imagined having a sister is like. We just got each other's back. I knew the real Anne. I supported her passion for baking, even when her own mother forbade her, and I was the only one who knew about her big crush on Count Harold, who often came bearing tributes from the people. Anne was so kind that she always gave me plenty of good food to share with mom and other maids. But mom wasn't too thrilled about this. For some reason, she was always anxious seeing how close me and Anne were. Don't forget your place, Diana. Princess Anne is still royalty, and you're just a little maid. Be sure you never cross the line with her. She's just trying to help us, Mom. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Then one day, Anne found a beautiful vintage dress from her closet and convinced me to try it on. I agreed, and once I stepped out of the changing screen, Anne was amazed. See, you'd make such a gorgeous princess. Did I ever tell you you remind me so much of my aunt, the late Queen Mary? I don't have much memories of her, but I've seen her picture in the royal family tree. And you very much shared the same aura with her. <laughs> I wish, Anne. But if I were a princess, I would have people do whatever I want. Like, fetch me my robes, servant. And when you're finished, my toes could use a salt bath. <laughs> we were just messing around when Mom came storming in. Diana, how dare you desecrate the princess? I told you not to cross the... She didn't finish her words, but fell to the ground, holding her chest in pain. I rushed over to her as Anne ran to the hallway looking for help. Mom! I... Diana... I need... to tell you something. No, Mom, save your strength. The doctor will be here any minute now. No, Diana, you listen to me. I've been hiding the truth from you your entire life. It's time you learn. What? What do you mean? I'm not your birth. Mother, Diana, just find my safe, okay? The answers are there. And don't tell anyone. She took a one last breath before closing her eyes. <laughs> the doctors rushed in, but it was too late. She had a heart attack with a pre-existing heart condition, so she didn't stand a chance. I spent the next week doing nothing except grieving my mother's passing. It didn't even bother me that we were not genetically tied. In my eyes, Stella was my mother, the only family I had. She loved and cared for me more than anyone else ever could. It hurt to even be here in her room, feeling her presence surrounding this place. But as I was going through her stuff, I accidentally stepped on a section of the floor that sounded hollow. It immediately sprung open, revealing a secret cellar underneath. The first thing I noticed was an intricate key-shaped necklace. Next to it was a letter, unveiling that this was an heirloom from my birth mother, who was none other than Queen Mary herself. Even more shockingly, she was still alive. <gasps> On the day I was born, by Miranda's order, I was separated from Queen Mary, and she was held captive in the castle's dungeon. If it weren't for her pleading Miranda not to harm me, I might have been thrown into some orphanage far away. Instead, I was placed in Stella's care, as Miranda wanted to keep a close eye on me to prevent any chance of betrayal. 
Stella had regretted following Miranda's order ever since, as she grew to love me like her true daughter. She wanted to run away with me, but the thought of Miranda finding out and putting her family in danger stopped her. But she'd hoped that one day, I'd be reunited with my mother. None of this felt real. My hands were still shaking as I held the letter. I need the answer to all my questions. I owed it to my mother to fulfill her dying wish. That night, following the instructions my mother left in her letter, I pretended to be a maid bringing food to prisoners and went down the secret tunnel. There were no guards in the large, abandoned prison, only a thin, emaciated woman. Slowly and carefully, I approached her. Are you Queen Mary? I handed her the necklace. The woman's eyes lit up, and she looked up at me in shock, tears welling in her eyes. Diana. I nodded. She pulled me into her arms and cried in joy, but then she abruptly pulled away from me. What are you doing down here? Miranda is going to find out. It's too dangerous. You need to leave. It's okay. No one knows I'm here. They won't find me. Still, it's too risky. My sister is an evil woman. She always wanted to be the queen. So she picked the day I was at my weakest to imprison me, subdue you, and falsely declared my demise during childbirth. That's how she eliminates any obstacles that stop her from seizing the kingdom. But Miranda will never be the queen in people's heart. She's nothing more than an oppressor, and it pains me to know she has corrupted our kingdom. But you are here now, Diana. You're the true heir to the throne. You have to stop Miranda. Me? I still haven't dared to believe any of this is real. I grew up just a little maid who's never been formally educated. What can I possibly do to overthrow someone in control of an entire country? Diana, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better childhood, but I know deep inside you are a strong, resilient girl. Stella told me all the time how smart and bright you are as she brought me food. Me and her both believed in you. You have the power to make things right. My mind was still swirling with all this new information, things that just seemed impossible, unbelievable. I understand why you might be doubtful, but here, leave the palace and test your DNA against mine. Once you confirm your identity, you can decide what to do next, but you can't stay inside the castle any longer, because once Miranda finds out you know the truth, she won't leave you alone. I hesitated for a moment, but I knew what needed to be done. So, early in the morning, I packed up some belongings and grabbed some food before sneaking into a freight truck that was about to leave. But then, I suddenly bumped into someone. Hey, watch where you're going! <gasps> Shh! Keep it down! Why? Don't tell me you're some kind of thief. No, I'm a maid. I'm just not allowed to go outside the palace. But, um, the princess desperately wants to make a, a Dutch chocolate cake, and the storage is out of ingredients, so I need to go to market. And did you plan to sneak into my truck and have a free ride there? Ugh, I didn't know it was your truck, but if you can help me, that would be lovely. And what would I get in return? My company. Fair enough. It's a lonely ride. By the way, what's your name? Diana, what's yours? Uh, um, people call me Harry. Now let's get going. We hopped into the truck, and Harry turned out to be not such a bad companion. It was nice to have someone else my age to talk to for once, especially a handsome one. Then he turned on this music that's called pop. I swear it was so good, I couldn't help grooving along. This song is my favorite. Do you know it? Nope. The queen doesn't even allow us to own a radio. Oh, wow. Maybe I can sneak one in for you. I would absolutely love that. <laughs> After a while of driving, we took a break in the forest to stretch our legs. I shared with Harry some cookies and baked earlier today, when suddenly a snake coiled around the lower part of my leg and sunk its teeth into it. Pain immediately shot up. Moments later, Harry dislodged the snake and threw it away. Then he leaned over, sucking the venom out of my wound without hesitation. I blushed, both confused and flattered. He grabbed some clean cloths in the truck and helped me bandage the wound. Uh, I'm sorry, that was weird. No, no, that was kind of you. And I really hate to say this, but I don't think the snake is poisonous. I read about it in a book once, but still, thank you for saving me. His face turned bright red even for minutes later. It was so cute. <laughs> we then continued our journey. When we arrived in an aristocratic area where people seemed to be living in luxury, I began to doubt that the kingdom was as poor and in bad shape as Queen Mary had said, until we arrived at the commoner community. 
I was taken aback by the small buildings and houses that were old and crumbling. The market was basically desolate, with only a couple of sellers in sight. I couldn't even find any baking supplies there. It was growing dark, so Harry asked if I wanted to crash at his place. I had nowhere else to go, so I agreed. Harry's house was shockingly small, but it was clean and cozy. His father is a doctor, and his mom takes care of his three-year-old sister. They kindly welcomed me and invited me to have dinner with them. Although it was frugal, to say the least, and I could tell that everyone was still hungry after the meal. I have a loaf of bread in my pack. I'd love to share it with you all, if that's okay, to thank you for your hospitality. Harry's mother smiled and nodded, and his little sister squealed in delight as she dug into the loaf of bread. Since the famine began, everyone has suffered, even the ones with good jobs. We've all needed to tighten our belts a bit. Just then, a loud thumping sounded at the front door. Open this door now, or we will kick it down. As Harry and his parents rushed to the door, I hid in another room, afraid that I would be recognized. The guards were there, demanding tax payment, or else the family would be removed from their home. It hurt me to watch them fork over the money, searching their pockets to count every last coin they had. That night, I tossed and turned. I couldn't stop thinking about how Queen Miranda could oppress her own people to this point. I was flooded with guilt, thinking about how gleefully Anne and I would share the tributes taken from these poor people, unaware that they were suffering and starving. I couldn't stay in bed any longer. I crept out into the hallway and down the stairs and suddenly spotted Harry's father reading a book under a lamplight. I'm sorry to disturb you. No worries. Anything I could help you with? Um, I actually do need your help. You see, I left the palace because I wanted to confirm something. If you could please compare my DNA to this, this person believes she's my birth mother. Sure, it might take a couple of days. That's fine, but please do not tell anyone about this. He looked confused, like he wanted to ask more questions, but seeing how reserved I was, he didn't. The next morning, I helped Harry and his mother clean up the houses of other people who couldn't pay the tax last night. The guards had ransacked a number of homes looking for the money, and now they were left starving and penniless. It couldn't go on like this. I need to find a way to feed the people first. So I came up with the idea of hunting some wild animals in the forest for food. Then I instructed each household to build a hidden cellar under the ground to store their food and keep their properties to themselves. I was so focused on the dire situation that I didn't even have time to worry about the DNA results until I received them that evening. The result shows that you and the other person are indeed related. <gasps> I see. It also shows that the other DNA belongs to the late Queen Mary. May I know how this is possible? I, um, uh, it's because Queen Mary is still alive. And if the result is true, that means I really am her daughter. At that moment, Harry unexpectedly entered the room, jaw dropped. You're what? 